Hi, I'm Pedro de Costa, Editorial Fellow here at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I'm joined by Monica de Boli, a fellow here and our Brazil expert, resident Brazil expert. Uh, so we know Brazilian politics are, are a complete mess and the, there are impeachment proceedings against the president. But let's leave that small detail aside for now and focus on the economic crisis at hand. We're also facing a deep recession uh, and high inflation. Can you give us a, a rundown of the latest developments economically and in the markets? Yeah, well, we've seen, um, we had recently the um, GDP numbers coming out showing that we are going to face, the country is going to face the worst recession um, in 2015 since 1990. So that was, you know, the first batch of bad news as of the last three weeks. Um, and soon after that, there's been a whole discussion about what's going to happen or what's going to be the 2016 fiscal target. And there was a lot of back and forth between the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Planning and the Ministry of Finance fighting for a higher um, primary surplus target for 2016 and the Minister, the Minister of Planning taking a different stance. And basically what's happened as of yesterday is that the government decided to go with a fiscal band, which is um, rather weird because it's, it's uh, it, countries don't normally do this. I mean, they set fiscal targets for themselves rather than, you know, a band whereby you say you set a floor and a ceiling and you say the fiscal, um, the primary surplus is going to vary between such and such. And that's what the government announced yesterday. So basically it said for 2016, we're looking at a fiscal target that can be anything from zero to 0.5 percent of GDP. And this is this sounds a lot like what happened a couple of months ago um, when s and downgraded Brazil. This was on September 9th. The day before, the government had, had actually hinted that, 20, that the 2016 fiscal target could be negative. And then, you know, Brazil got downgraded the very next day. So, and so how are international markets likely to react to the latest, this kind of very original idea, if you could call it that, of a flexible well, ban? in a sense, it's kind of following that script back, back in September where the government announces something that sounds totally off the wall. And then, you know, the a ratings agency downgrades the country the very this next day. This time it was Fitch ratings. This time it was Fitch. Um, a lot of that... Which means that we have two of the three major rating agencies now have Brazil in junk territory. Is that right? That's right. So we only have now, we're now waiting for Moody's. Um, and in a way, we'll, in a way, this was already priced in. I yeah. mean, markets had already um, pretty much seen this coming, given the the. the just the depth of deterioration and the depth of political dysfunction and everything else. But the I think the thing that is most important here is that looking forward, since there's no kind of sign that anything's going to improve, we will probably see a Moody's downgrade very soon. We might see S&P um, downgrading Brazil further into junk territory. Fitch has left Brazil on negative outlook, meaning that you know they can um, do a further downgrade within the next whatever, 12 months or even less. So the situation really is looking very, very tricky. And what is the role of, of finance minister Joaquin Levy? Because there's been rumors that he's going to leave and the government has repeatedly asserted that that's not the case, that he's remaining. And he was one of the few f sort of internationally credible figures within the government. What do you think is, is likely to be his fate? Well, it's looking like he will leave this time, yeah. um, especially because this time it's different. This time is different. Um, as of this morning, a, lot, a batch of news came out saying that a number of people on his team are leaving or have recently left, uh, meaning that, you know, basically this is like, OK, we've tried all we could do. We haven't been able to get what we needed to get done um, on the fiscal front. So perhaps a new team needs to come in and try to get things done, though it's really difficult to see how that will happen in this extremely difficult political environment that I don't think we're going to talk about this time. Indeed. <laughs> well, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it for another segment and uh, we'll try to sort out the, what the impeachment process might look like and how prolonged that would be. But we'll leave it there for now. Thank you, Monica. Thank you.